This is Mark Syme, minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and these are the evening services for the Northfield Church for Sunday, October the 10th. We'll sing a few songs, uh, observe the Lord's Supper, and have a message for all of you. Uh, you will guess pretty quickly from the theme of the songs, perhaps what uh, the message will be all about. So if you have your songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise, and if you would turn to number 533, 533. I am the sheep, and the Lord is my shepherd, watching over my soul, my soul to keep guarding over and ever, watching wherever I go. And when the wind blows, he is my shelter. And when the lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory. Constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. We are his children and he is our father, watching over my soul. Great is his love for his sons and his daughters, watching wherever we go. And when the wind blows, he is my shelter. And when the lost and alone, he rescues me. And when the lion comes, he is my victory, constantly watching over me. He is constantly watching over me. Number 125, 126, sorry. 126. The Lord my shepherd is. I shall be well supplied, since he is mine and I am his. What can I want beside? What can I want beside? He leads me to the place where heavenly pasture grows. Where living waters gently pass, and full salvation flows, and full salvation flows. If ever I go astray, we doth my soul reclaim. And guides me in his own right way For his most holy name For his most holy name To prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper If we will turn to number 364 364. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. 
For through the loving Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here, everyone belongs. Finding our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the morn. We are now a family of which the Lord is hand. Finding sin, he meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. On the first day of the week, we are commanded to gather together to break bread together. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7 tells us that uh, explicitly. First day of the week, not the fourth day, not the eighth day, the first day of the week. And that was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, the uh, day that uh, we gather together has changed from the old covenant, which was the Sabbath on Saturday to Sunday, the Lord's day. And uh, as the uh, song that we sang uh, talked about, it says, come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. And that's what we're doing when we gather about the Lord's table. We'll take the bread, the symbol of Jesus' body given up for us. We will drink the wine. But in essence, what we're doing is we're getting to share the Lord. What a wonderful experience. What a wonderful time that we can think on, on those terms. It's almost too glorious to think on that level that we have the opportunity to share the Lord as we share in his supper. Let's pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to give his body up that we might live, that he was willing to go to the pain, through the pain, that he was willing to make that one time and perfect sacrifice for all of us. As we partake, partake of the bread, help us to remember his body hanging on the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. As the song said, we did come and break the bread, and now we will come and drink the wine, the symbol of the blood that Jesus shed for each one of us. Help us to remember the life-giving blood that flows through us, that Jesus uh, allowed to flow from him as his life ebbed away. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that uh, Jesus was willing to shed that innocent blood. We just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we can always look inside of ourselves and understand that 
uh, we just need to remember that as we as we share the Lord that Jesus was willing to to allow the blood to flow from his body and in essence that blood will wash away our sins help us to drink this in a worthy manner we pray it in his most holy name amen Also, on the first day of the week, we're commanded to lay by in store. We're commanded to give as we has, have prospered. Um, and certainly, each of us here has prospered. And so, uh, let's remember each week to allocate a certain amount of our monetary gain during the week uh, to our Lord. Because He has given all of that to us and we have the opportunity to give back. We have the opportunity uh, to move our church in a direction in which many souls will be brought to him. Let's pray for the giving. We're just so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that we have the opportunity to give. It's a blessed opportunity. It is our chance to sacrifice of what we have and give it back to you so that your work can be furthered. Bless us in our giving. Help us to be cheerful about it. Help us to be grateful to the one to whom we give. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And if finally you would turn your songbooks to number 845. Eight forty five. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, Come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. If you participate in singing, we thank you so much and know that the Lord was praised through our song. As you uh, probably got the gist of uh, the songs, uh, each one of them other than the communion song, uh, said something about being a shepherd. If you were there this morning, you heard that uh, the lesson this evening would be entitled, uh, Jesus as Shepherd. You know, in, in uh, 2021, uh, we don't think of shepherding very much. Uh, it just isn't done the same way that it was done when the Bible was written uh, the New Testament, uh, 2,000 years ago in the Old Testament, uh, much, much further back than that. But sheep and shepherds are mentioned uh, constantly in the Bible. And there are many, many inspired lessons drawn from this metaphor. Uh, if you've been in church uh, for very, very long, you've probably heard a great deal of messages about shepherding. And it was true both in Old Testament times and New Testament times. And so when the term shepherd and the term sheep were used, people knew what was being talked about. They were a major part of society uh, of that day. With that, uh, it's not surprising that uh, Jesus is referred to as a shepherd. And it might be interesting to note in the New Testament, he is referred 
to three different times as being a shepherd. And again, uh, to further this, it's especially interesting to note that, uh, and noting this fact about uh, Jesus being the shepherd, that a different adjective, a different modifying word is used to describe him as the shepherd. If you can go back to your high school or college English, you know that it, an adjective is a word that uh, modifies, that describes a noun. And so Jesus, the man, was referred to as a shepherd, a noun. And the adjective is the modifier. In John chapter 10 and verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. So the first modifier here, the first adjective here in talking about the shepherd is that Jesus is the good shepherd. Physically, a shepherd would fight for his sheep. Because back in those days, uh, uh, sheep were free-range animals. They were all free-range animals. Uh, they had to be taken to a place where there was food. Uh, and those places uh, weren't always safe. There were animals that would love to prey on sheep and make a, a lamb uh, or a sheep uh, their next meal. It was the job of the shepherd to protect those sheep to the extent that the shepherd would lay down his life for his sheep. In Isaiah 53, in this wonderful descriptive uh, chapter about uh, Jesus, in uh, verse 6, it says, All the sheep have gone astray. And so the shepherd is especially important when it comes to who the shepherd is taking care of. And we see that the root word for shepherd is sheep. Guess what? You and I are the sheep. And you, are I, you and I are the sheep that Isaiah says have gone astray. And so to keep the sheep from going astray, a shepherd is needed. And as a shepherd is willing to lay down his life to save the sheep, so Jesus, at that wonderful right time that we just commemorated in taking the Lord's Supper, at that very right time, Jesus laid down his life. Why? to save his sheep. Now, figuratively speaking, if you remember, another metaphor in the Bible was that the sheep were the gentle ones, the sheep were the followers. The, the renegade folks were the goats. In reality, <laughs> if we really want to follow this through, uh, Jesus came to shave to save the goats. He, he came to, to turn the goats into sheep, into these gentle animals that would listen to the voice of the shepherd. In Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 8, the Apostle Paul says that for while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been fulfilled by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. We need very, very much to, to remember uh, that we were the sinners. We were 
uh, literally the the goats in uh, in Matthew uh, chapter twenty five verse thirty one through thirty three Jesus says, "But when the Son of Man comes to his glory and all the angels with him, then will he sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And so our goal here is to be the sheep. The sheep are the good ones. The sheep are the one who, ones who the shepherd guards and guides. And so this adjective is the good shepherd. But I'm going to one-up you here. In uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 to 21, the Hebrew writer says, Now the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of his eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to his will. We're going to one up from the good shepherd to the great shepherd. Good is wonderful. Great is better. And so uh, Hebrews 13 is near the end of this wonderful book. That, uh, that of Hebrews, the writer who uh, we don't quite know, but we know that the Hebrew writer exalted, exalted Christ, calling him the great shepherd. Why? Well, the good shepherd laid down his life, it, and because of him laying down his life, that was great. That was a wonderful thing that he did. But the really great thing was that Jesus rose from the dead. And so even though Jesus' death is a payment for our sin, it would not have accomplished the goal if Jesus had remained in the grave. Jesus rose from the dead. He had come forth and Paul explains it in Romans chapter 4 and verse 25 when he says, Who, that being Christ, was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. It was only because Jesus was risen from the dead that we are justified. Christ did die for our offenses. He did die for our, our sins. But we were not declared innocent until Jesus rose from the dead. It's like being raised out of the waters of baptism. It is that, it is that new life that we are going toward. Thus, Jesus is more than the good shepherd. Jesus is the great shepherd because he accomplished the purpose for which he was sent. Yes, to sacrifice himself, but show himself uh, and show to the world his power, God's power over death. It can be called great because all, of all the benefits that you and I receive from that. We were sinners and now we are de declared innocent. We have hope. And, and that hope is the, a Bible certainty of going to heaven. And it is great because we will be like him when we are resurrected. How do I know that? Go ahead and read 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. And so I told you there are going to be three examples here of Jesus as the shepherd. He is the good shepherd. He is the great shepherd shepherd. And Peter describes him with another adjective in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4. 
Peter says, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. After the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell upon the apostles, Jesus, uh, Jesus, I'm sorry, Peter became a spiritual shepherd. And so through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when he wrote that epistle of first Peter, he wrote about the chief sh shepherd and in that uh, it would do for those who served as shepherds over God's people. When the church was formed to make the church as perfect as possible, God wanted there to be guides within the church. Now they have gone by different names. We've called them elders. We've called them bishops. We've called them overseers. But in essence, what the leaders of the church who are to spiritually guide the church are called are shepherds. They're shepherds because they're there to help guide the sheep, which are the members of each congregation. Jesus is the shepherd among shepherds. Have you heard that term? You know, the, the man among men, you know, uh, the athlete among athletes, the singer among singers. You know, when we, when we try to, to delineate who the greatest athlete, who the greatest uh, singer might be. But, and we say he is the, you know, the pinnacle. Jesus is the pinnacle. He is the chief shepherd. He is the shepherd of shepherds. When leaders in the church are called shepherds, we are hearkened back to Jesus as the shepherd who watches over his sheep. And as the chief shepherd, all the shepherds of the sheep will give an answer for the way they served as shepherds. And so when men aspire to the office of elder or overseer or bishop or or shepherd whatever we might say we understand that there's a great responsibility to it because in essence what they are doing is they are putting themselves out there the way jesus was out there as the good shepherd and as the great shepherd and even though men can aspire to be that wonderful they can assume this office and help to guide the congregation um, there are good elders and shepherds all over the world doing their job to guide their flock and keep their flock uh, moving in the right direction Think about the tender message that God has given to us through the inspired word. The Holy Spirit gave to us, as he described Jesus, he gave us a good shepherd. He gave us a great shepherd. And he gave us the shepherd among shepherds, the chief shepherd. Now, that puts the ball literally in our court because we are the sheep. We are the ones to be guided. We are the ones that need to be tender to the voice and to the touch of the good, great, and chief shepherd. And when we do that, we'll bring honor on our God. We'll bring honor on our Savior who ruled over us and continues to rule and one day will judge each one of us. We will be the godly people that we are called upon 
to be. Because we have the example of Jesus as the one who guided his sheep, the good, great, and chief shepherd. I pray that these words have maybe caused us to think a little bit. Uh, and so as we, as we retire this evening, uh, we can use uh, these wonderful descriptive adjectives that explain Jesus to us in terms that, you know, they understood 2,000 years ago, and I think we can still understand in the very same way that Jesus is our shepherd. You know, we don't want to be the goats. We want to be the sheep. To be the sheep, we have to obey what the shepherd says and come under his supervision. What that means is to become a believer and a follower of the great shepherd. By that, we need to understand what it means to be within Christ so that we can be sensitive to his directions. We need to confess that Jesus, the great shepherd, is indeed the son of the living God. We need to repent of our former lives and finally be baptized for the remission of our sins. It is then that we can rise up out of the water like Jesus rose up out of the grave with that biblical hope of living with the Lord forever. If you need that, uh, you need but to call one of us this evening and uh, we will uh, take care of that as soon as we possibly can. Uh, it's wonderful to have uh, a, a God who is so loving and so kind and a, a Savior that uh, is good, great, and chief among all who have ever lived. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the short amount of time that we've had together this evening. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we attempt in every way to do your will, as we attempt to be the sheep that we are to be because you are the wonderful, good, great, and chief shepherd. Uh, your son came and did what he had to do here on earth to qualify for that. Help us as we, uh, uh, as we live our godly lives that uh, we will be ready for Jesus to return. And he will say, well good, my, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the Lord's kingdom. You're now the sheep that you are supposed to have been. I pray for all of those uh, on our sick and hurting list. I especially ask that you would be with Maria Therese as she is still suffering from the effects of COVID. Uh, bless her. It's, she is in a weakened condition right now. I just pray that you would be with her and your tender touch would be with her and help us to keep her on our hearts and in our prayers. Be with us through the evening. Protect us. Help us to be the servants of yours that we need to be. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. Uh, stay safe. And may God bless you all. Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise him.